Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended has several new features that allow users to create 3D content with no need for an additional application. First, we'll look at the ability Photoshop CS4 Extended has to create geometry from scratch. In this instance, we're going to take this photo and wrap it around a piece of geometry Photoshop will create for us. So I'm going to select the layer with the photo, go to the 3D menu, select New Shape from Layer, and I'm going to create a cylinder. Photoshop then creates a three-dimensional cylinder and wraps our image around that cylinder. Now this is a completely three-dimensional object. We could add lights and cameras. We could also change its materials, paint on it, do anything else we would do with a normal 3D layer. I'm going to undo that. Photoshop has also added a way for us to take advantage of 3D features using simple 2D layers. Let's say, for example, we wanted to add a spotlight to this image, or perhaps we wanted to rotate this image in 3D space. What we could do is go to the 3D menu, select New 3D Postcard from Layer. What that's done is create an actual 3D object from the photo, except it's just a flat image. So we can select one of the 3D navigational tools from the Tools panel and move this around. You can see that it is a 3D plane. This plane will also respect 3D cameras and 3D lights that you create here in Photoshop. Next, we're going to look at volume rendering with DICOM layers. I'm going to go to File Open to open a new DICOM sequence. This DICOM sequence is a series of cross-section stills. So as I use the up and down arrow keys to navigate this, you can see the different still images that comprise the sequence. In Photoshop CS4 Extended, we could actually create a volume rendering using these sequences. I'm going to click Select All to select all of the images. Then I'm going to click Import as Volume, and then click Open. And what Photoshop does when you bring in the DICOM sequence as a volume is it creates the illusion that all those images have created this 3D volume. Also note that when you bring in a DICOM sequence like this and you go to the 3D panel, there is a series of DICOM specific render modes available to you. Now you could also create your own volume rendering with your own pixel layers by going to the 3D menu and selecting new volume from layers. Next we're going to look at using gray values to generate a depth map. I have here this photo of a brick wall, and what we're going to do is go to the 3D menu and select New Mesh from Grayscale. Now this is technically an RGB image, but what it's going to do is look at the luminance values to determine what should be raised and what should be sunken in. So under New Mesh from Grayscale, I'm going to select Plane. And so you can see as I rotate this that the light areas were raised and the dark areas were sunken in. I could also adjust the amount of extrusion by going to this little square on the 3D axis and clicking and dragging up to reduce the amount of extrusion or by clicking down to increase the amount of extrusion. Also note that this too is a fully 3D object which respects lights, cameras, materials, and so forth. Also now in Photoshop we can composite 2D and 3D data. If I created a new blank pixel layer and filled it with a bricky red, I'm going to use Alt Backspace or Option Delete on the Mac to do that. And with this layer selected, I'm going to go to the Layers Panel Flyout menu and select Merge Down. Note that the layer is still 3D, but the red data has been merged to the top of the surface of our 3D object. Finally, we're going to look at creating a 360 degree spherical panorama. This panorama was created in Photoshop by using many photos of a particular area. Now we're going to have Photoshop wrap this around a sphere for us, so basically it creates an entire 360 degree panorama for us. So I'm going to go to the 3D menu, go to New Shape from Layer, and select Spherical Panorama. And if we zoom out a little bit here, and then we rotate here, essentially what we have is a 360 degree panorama of this cityscape. You can easily fix the inherent north and south pole distortions by using the merge 2D data down techniques that we just used with the brick wall. And so that covers many of the ways to create 3D objects from 2D objects in Photoshop CS4 Extended.